Hello children, welcome to your 7th standard science class. When you look around, we see many changes. Things are changing all around you. What are the causes of these changes? The materials around you are changing in shape, structure, etc. Releasing or absorbing energy and creating a new substance at certain times. Let us learn about these changes and how they can be classified according to their occurrences. We are going to study these changes in our lesson 13, Changes Physical and Chemical. In this lesson, we are going to study the types of changes, mainly natural and man-made changes, slow and fast changes, periodic and non-periodic changes, desirable or undesirable changes, that is useful and harmful changes, reversible and irreversible changes, and physical and chemical changes. Observe the picture and see what changes have taken place in the materials. What kind of changes are they? We can classify these changes based on many factors. Let us see the first factor natural and man-made changes. Let us consider some changes. A fruit falling from a tree, rusting of iron, lighting of an electric bulb, the ripening of a fruit, cutting vegetables, or the curdling of milk. Some of the above changes occur of their own accord or they occur naturally. Can you name them? Changes like ripening of a fruit, spoiling of milk, etc. occur naturally. These are called natural changes. Whereas some changes are man-made. Many changes such as sharpening a pencil, baking a bread, cooking food, etc. are useful to us. Therefore, these are called useful changes. The changes that are not useful or changes that do us harm are called harmful changes. For example, the curdling of milk is a harmful change. Now, can you classify the natural and man-made changes as useful and harmful changes? Yes. For example, the ripening of a fruit is a useful change that occurs naturally. Now let's consider two changes, the bursting of a balloon and the ripening of a fruit. From the point of view of their duration, that is the time taken to happen, we can classify them as quick or fast change and slow change. The bursting of the balloon is a quick or fast change. It happens quickly. Whereas the ripening of a fruit takes a long time. So changes that take place in a short period of time are fast or quick changes, while changes that take place over a long period of time are called slow changes. Now this is an activity which can be done using bangle pieces. And after heating, you can bend the bangle pieces and form various designs. Melting of wax and obtaining original solid wax again is something that we can do repeatedly. The changes that can occur in a forward and reverse direction again and again are called reversible changes. For example, melting of chocolate. It's an example of a reversible change. The chocolate melts when you heat it and then it solidifies as it cools. So this is a reversible change. Similarly, butter. On heating, the butter will melt and when it cools, it will solidify. So this is again a reversible change. When we put some water in the freezer of a refrigerator, it will turn into ice. If we warm the ice, it melts and changes back into water. 
So this is again an example of a reversible change. Similarly, water on heating changes to water vapor and the water vapor on cooling or condensing it changes to water again. So this is again a reversible change. The changes that you see over here are irreversible changes. Wood cannot be obtained from the ash formed on burning the wood. A ripe mango cannot be transformed back into a raw mango. Eggs cannot be reversed after frying them in a pan. Now all these are examples of irreversible changes. That is, if a change cannot be reversed, it is called an irreversible change. In this change, the product cannot be converted to their original form. We find some changes occur again and again after a definite interval of time. Such changes are called periodic changes. When we cannot say for sure when a certain change will recur after one occurrence and even if they recur, the time interval is not fixed. Such changes are called non-periodic changes. That is, periodic changes occur repeatedly after regular intervals of time and their occurrences can be predicted. Another example is, if thunder strikes at a point at 4 p.m. today, can we tell when another thunder will strike at the same location? We cannot predict. Here, the time interval is not fixed. Such changes are called non-periodic changes. The hands of the clock shows a periodic change. You can think about other examples of periodic and non-periodic changes. Now observe this picture. Which changes shown in the picture are temporary and which are permanent? Say for example, a raw mango becoming a ripe mango. Is it a temporary change or a permanent change? Yes, it is a permanent change. Similarly, a rosebud blooming into a flower. This is again a permanent change. In which of these changes did the original matter undergo a change? Again, in the case of a raw mango becoming a ripe mango, the original substance underwent a change. Whereas, when ice is changed into water, the original substance is not undergoing any change. Or, in this case, the original matter remain unchanged. In which of the changes was a new substance with a new property formed? In which of these changes do, will you get a new substance? Again, if you take the first example, you are getting a new substance here with new properties. So we observe that in some changes, the properties of the original substance remains the same. That is, their composition remains unchanged. No new substance is formed. Such a change is called a physical change. So a physical change occurs when a substance changes, but no new substance is formed. Physical changes occur when the state of the substance changes or a substance is crushed, ground or cut into small pieces. Physical changes are often easy to reverse. Other examples of physical changes, any state of change that is melting, freezing, evaporating, dissolving, cutting, bending, all are examples of physical change. In all these cases, no new substance is formed. So it's a physical change. Similarly, molding clay, cutting a paper, sharpening pencil, melting of ice, etc. are also examples of physical changes. The change due to which 
one substance is transformed into another substance having new and different properties is called a chemical change. These are some examples of chemical changes. The rusting of iron, burning of wood, the metabolic activities that takes place in our body, cooking an egg, baking a cake, etc. are all examples of chemical changes. When ice turns into water, no new substance is formed. The composition of ice and water are the same. There is only a change in the state of matter. That is, it has changed from solid to liquid state. Whereas when wood burns and form ash, wood undergoes a complete change. In this change, a new substance is formed. The properties of wood and ash are different. Wood is hard, but ash can be powdered easily. We cannot get back the wood from the ash. That is, chemical changes are mostly irreversible changes. Now let's see the difference between a physical change and a chemical change. A physical change is a temporary change, whereas a chemical change is a permanent one. In a physical change, no new substance is formed. There is change only in physical properties. In a chemical change, new substances are formed with entirely different physical and chemical properties. In a physical change, the change can be reversed by simple physical methods. In a chemical change, the change cannot be reversed by simple physical methods. Energy may or may not be released or absorbed in a physical change. Energy is released or absorbed during a chemical change. Most of the time, original form of the substance can be obtained easily by simple physical methods in a physical change. Whereas in a chemical change, the original substance cannot be obtained by simple physical methods. Evaporation the process of formation of vapor from a liquid is called evaporation. Drying clothes, formation of salt from sea water, etc. are possible due to evaporation. Corrosion. When an iron article rusts, a reddish brown layer forms on it. A greenish layer is seen to form on a copper article. This process is called corrosion of metals. Things become weak due to corrosion. Corrosion is caused by oxygen, moisture, vapors of chemicals in the air. Now how can we prevent corrosion? Iron articles are given a thin coat of zinc to prevent corrosion. This is called galvanization. Copper and brass articles are coated with tin. This is called tinning. Now in this age of technology, a new process called powder coating has been developed. Coats of various colors are applied on metals like iron and aluminum. They prevent corrosion of metals. So let's revise what we have studied today. The changes around us, based on use, they can be classified as desirable changes and undesirable changes or useful and harmful changes. On the basis of reversibility, you can classify the changes as reversible and irreversible changes. Based on the speed, you can classify the changes as fast and slow changes. And based on the time interval, you can classify them as periodic and non-periodic changes. Always remember, while classifying the changes, we take into account only one criteria at a time. However, a number of different criteria can be applied to the same change. For example, the ripening of a fruit is a useful change. It is an irreversible change. It is a slow change and also it is a chemical change. So we see that a number of criteria can be applied to the same change. Please read the lesson thoroughly. Thank you and have a nice day.